What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. I think this episode might be a slightly shorter one than usual today and I know that a lot of you are enjoying the longer form content on Shark Bites so please forgive me for that. But I promise we'll be back with some more longer form content soon. Right, okay, I've had a number of people get in touch with me over the last few weeks asking me about a YouTube channel called Final Affliction and in particular a video that was released by them a few weeks back now about sharks. From what I can see Final Affliction is an animal attack channel which looks into the gory details about when animals attack humans. I think there looks to be a pretty big market for channels like this on YouTube and I guess it must be something to do with the morbid curiosity of humans. People like to listen to gruesome stories about humans being killed by animals for some reason. <laughs> now I'm going to tread a little bit carefully here because I don't believe in putting down other channels on YouTube. Everyone has the right to make whatever content they want to make and likewise viewers have the choice as to whether they watch it or not. Personally I don't think I'll be watching many Final Affliction YouTube videos but that's just my opinion. You can go and check out their YouTube channel and make your own mind up. So I'm not going to sit here today and take the piss out of another YouTuber's channel because I think that would be a bit harsh. But as a shark scientist, I feel like it's partly my duty to call out misinformation about sharks when I see it. And the final affliction video that loads of you got in touch with me about is jam packed full of misinformation about sharks. So today we're going to go through some of it and I'm going to give you the truth, at least from a shark science perspective anyway. Okay, so the video in question is this one and it's titled this pack of eight sharks devour two boys. Initially, I thought it might be a bit of a clickbaity title to try and lure people in, but after watching the video, it definitely full-blown rolls with this title. <laughs> right, okay, let's have a look. Today's video is one of the rare occasions where grey white sharks were documented in hunting people in packs. A group of eight man-eating sharks stalked and killed two young boys after they were swept out to sea by the current, resulting in one of the most gruesome shark attacks in history. So Final Affliction is suggesting here that there was once an occasion where a pack of eight great white sharks worked together to hunt and eat two young lads. I'm already not buying this, but let's continue listening. Despite their reputation as lone hunters, there are now significant research showing that great white sharks will cooperate with one another, hunting in groups and sharing the spoils. Scientists say research off Mexico's Guadalupe Island in the Pacific Ocean shows great white sharks are so sociable and will sometimes work together to increase their chances of catching prey. A team of scientists from Florida International University created a social tag tracking device to put on the great white sharks. With a video camera and sensors detecting the shark's acceleration, depth and direction, the device also has receivers to detect when other sharks are near them. The team then put the devices on various male and female white sharks over a four-year period. The data showed that instead of being lone hunters, sharks preferred to be in and hunt in groups of the same sex, but their ways of hunting were unique. They would take turns patrolling smaller prey like seal colonies, but when it came to hunting larger prey, they would often hunt in groups, working together to take down its prey. Okay, so they're referencing some research here that was done in Guadalupe, Mexico that suggests white sharks are more social than we first thought. And interestingly enough, I know this paper. It was written by Yanni Papastamatiu, who's a pretty renowned shark scientist working out of Miami, Florida. And the paper that he wrote is called Social Dynamics and Individual Hunting Tactics of White Sharks Revealed by Biologging. Now, the paper does suggest that white sharks are more social than we first thought, but no way in the slightest does it suggest that white sharks hunt in packs or groups. Like, for example, what lions might do. That bit appears to be well and truly misconstrued by Final Affliction in their video. Looking at the paper, we can see that Yanni and his team attached by biologging devices to three male and three female great white sharks, whilst also placing other tags on other white sharks and receiver arrays throughout the study area. So what these tags can do is essentially talk to each other as one individual white shark swims past another one. And the receiver arrays that are dotted around the study area can also pick up when a white shark swims past those receivers. With all these tags chatting with each other and receiver arrays picking up white sharks left, right and center, you start to get a pretty good idea of where those white sharks are going 
and which white sharks are spending more time with one another. And based on the data, the team did get some pretty interesting results. One of the sharks who only had its tag on for 30 hours spent time with 12 other individual white sharks, while another shark which had its tag on for five days only spent time with two other sharks. This is basically telling us that some sharks are social and other sharks aren't very social. Yanni and his team also noted that most of the socializing occurred around a group of seals. And this suggests that the sharks are hanging around one another to try and take advantage of another individual's success during or after a hunt. This is very, very different to sharks are working together to hunt prey. It's more of a case of sharks are trying to get an advantage over each other. There's even a quote here from lead author Yanni that says, they aren't working together, but being social could be a way to share information. So if you didn't for whatever reason believe me, there is a direct quote from the guy who wrote the study. <laughs> he also goes on to say that it's likely some of the associations between the white sharks are due to random chance encounters with each other. That means that those tagged sharks just happen to be in the vicinity of another tagged shark and the tags just pick that up as an interaction. But it's potentially random because where are white sharks most likely to cross paths with each other? Yep, that's right, next to a big old food source in that seal colony. To suggest that this paper is saying that white sharks are working together in large groups to hunt prey and to hunt humans is just pure nonsense. It's simply not true. So Final Affliction then goes on to use their interpretation of that research paper to explain a shark attack that happened in the Dominican Republic back in the 1960s. Now, I won't play the rest of the video here for you because it's pretty long and drawn out. They essentially spend the next eight minutes of the video describing that incident in real detail. To sum up the final affliction version of events, some lads get knocked into the water in the Dominican Republic during a storm, and then they're getting bashed up against the breakers. Two of them then get swept out to sea and are suddenly attacked by a pack of eight great white sharks who were working together to hunt and kill them. It sounds pretty ridiculous, right? So I was wondering where they managed to get all this information from because I was really struggling to find much about it online at all. But what I did find is this little document here from the Global Shark Attack file. We've got about six sentences of information here in this little document for this particular incident and somehow Final Affliction has managed to spin this out into eight minutes of content. Most of the direct quotes we have are from a chap called Arturo Gigante who I can't find any information on at all. And that's where we get some of the info about there being eight sharks and then also some other stuff about one of the boys being tossed into the air and then another shark shark biting him while he's in midair. It's all a bit wishy-washy with minimal quotes and no real corroboration between any of the eyewitnesses that saw the incident. For example, some of the eyewitnesses were saying the boys had already drowned and were floating in the water when the sharks attacked them. And then other people were saying, no, they were still alive. It's all very wishy-washy. But most of the information that's in that document there is very difficult to look at definitively. And you have to bear in mind as well that this incident occurred about 60 years ago. So the reliability levels of reporting on this from a place like the Dominican Republic 60 years ago are probably pretty low. What isn't mentioned at all in that document is great white sharks. It clearly says in that document there, the species remained unidentified. And the reason they don't mention great white sharks is simply down to the fact that there has never been a great white shark sighting in the Dominican Republic. The waters are just simply too warm for them there. It would be wild to suggest that even one great white shark was responsible for this incident, let alone eight of them all working together. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that there was no shark attack here. Let me be very, very clear on that. It's entirely possible that these two boys were attacked by sharks. Whether they had already drowned by that point, we'll never know. I think the most likely version of events was that it was a feeding frenzy by some opportunistic shark species that just happened to be in the area at the time. Maybe a few bull sharks would have been big enough to cause some serious damage to these two young lads, enough to flail them around in the water at least. Realistically, we're never going to definitively know for sure. But to suggest that this was a pack of eight great white sharks that were all working together in unison for a common goal, which was to hunt, kill, and eat these two young lads, is just pure fabricated nonsense. It's not true. I think this is why science communication is really, really important. We've got two things here, a new research paper on great white shark social behavior that was published earlier this year, and then a shark attack that happened nearly 60 years ago in the Dominican Republic that have somehow been stitched together to create this absolutely nonsense video. And unfortunately, this is how misinformation spreads. This final affliction video has got a ton of views and loads of comments where you can bet a lot of the people that are watching that video are believing the content to be pure fact. And it brings me on to my point here for all of you, and that's to remember to really think critically about the things that you are watching online. You have to question it and make sure you look into it enough to try and get to the bottom of it. Okay, right, that's enough from me. Hopefully I've cleared most of that up for you there, and now you have a much clearer picture of what exactly has gone down here. Thanks to a few of you Shark Bite subscribers for sending me that video. I actually hadn't seen it before, and 
I think it's really important to address misinformation about sharks on YouTube. Of course, if you're after the truthful stuff about sharks, you will always find it here on Shark Bites. So what did you think of that then? A load of rubbish or are you buying into the whole great whites hunting in packs thing? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. You really help out the channel every time you click that like button and it's massively appreciated by me. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.